Hey, everybody, welcome back. Here's some Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Let's return to the dark multiverse with Aww. another tale from the dark multiverse. Could we not? In the self titled Tales from the Dark Multiverse. Here, you can draw it from this book here of Tale from the Dark Multiverse Wonder Woman War of the Gods, which was released as its own little thing here. Or you could get the Tales from the Dark Multiverse 2 hardcover. That's right. There are two hardcovers that collect all the Tales in the Dark Multiverse. No Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow hardcover, but hardcover for Tales from the Dark Multiverse 2! Volume 2. Um, which you can use to follow along if you choose. Can we... Um, we, we, we already talked about Wonder Woman War of the Gods. You know, it's funny you should say that because under your seat you will find a copy of Wonder Woman War of the Gods from George Perez and company. Uh, not you. We only have money for one. <sighs> and we spent it already to get this when you did your episode. I read all of this. You did. I, I remember listening to that. To, to be fair, I also read all of this. But I understood about a quarter of it and just threw it in your lap. Uh, thankfully, you might notice the difference in length. Yeah. Between that and I this. mean, while this should have been shorter. <laughs> I don't know how. This is, this is too short well, and this, for this. This came about around the time that we coordinated our Back Issues episode on War of the Gods. And I was like, oh, this will be great because I don't get it. And we can do the War of the Gods and then I can do the Dark Multiverse War of the Gods. Exactly. It uses the characters in the incarnations that they would be in that time period. Okay. Uh, and yet it goes in another direction. Of course, every tale from the Dark Multiverse, anyone worth its salt anyway, is narrated by Tempest Fugonaut, one of our favorite characters. Man. Get us that statue. I want a Tempest Fugonaut on this set, Fan please. Fan favorite. Where is our Tempest Fugonaut? He, standing like this, he could be one of those Hasbro, like expensive, like tall yes. figures. Yes, he looks like one of those like generation one transformers statues that yeah. you don't touch but you spend a thousand dollars on yo but this is war of the gods yeah i think he also needs to be like that why is that in here i'm in this what's happening oh, five piece compendium because the tra the trade paperback is not long enough to collect the second volume of tales of the dark multiverse so in order for you to get your bearings and understanding of the tale from the dark multiverse that you are reading you get its complement also printed with it, but not all of it, you see. So like, let's say you're reading Tales of the Dark Multiverse, Dark Knight's Metal, which is one of the most insane. Well, we're gonna put in an issue from the actual Dark Knight's Metal story arc. You know, so you can compare and contrast, which I think is a terrible idea because you're looking at them and you're going, well, what, uh, I don't even understand what's happening. You're I'm only getting one issue's worth of context for this entire story, which is following in the tradition of what if, which is like, okay, so, you know, the Evolutionary War was like 28 parts or whatever. Uh, but what if Evolutionary War is 22 pages? And uh, so we have to really take some liberties and assume that you know what's going on. All right. So, so it is with this. So DC was just like, let's take a page from Marvel. And Big what time. Ifs. Oh, no question. And something weird about what if, because what if was initially just like, Let's try something that we'll, we would never consider doing in our publishing line, which of course in today's world uh, is nothing. There's nothing they wouldn't do. Uh, so what if is irrelevant? Because why, w why would you not just do the thing? In fact, you know what? That's canon now. Right. Well, let, let's just do that in canon, but longer. That's, that's, that's Marvel's approach now. But the original what if was like, what if Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four? And Hickman's like, yeah, good question. But it was fun and whimsical. And then the second volume was just the, the same, more. And it was also an opportunity for them to do like a, a talent showcase. They're like, eh, Mark Bagley, can you draw like a full issue? Here you go. And so Mark Bagley did, I think, uh, what if the alien costume says Spider-Man? You know, like, but just here, uh, Greg Capullo also drew a what if comic. Like there's a lot of like names in what if where you're like, oh, cool. But also uh, who gives a crap? about anything that happened in there because A, it doesn't matter, and B, it's too short for it to matter. Uh, and even when they do stray and make multiple issues, like in, uh, there's one, okay, there's multiple what if Captain America will revive today, but one of them 
stuck with me really hard and it was a two-parter and it's like, why? Like, why bother? How much story is here? Certainly not two issues worth, but I digress. The point being, eventually in like the late 90s, early 2000s, What If was like, let's get dark. <laughs> what if dark? What if it was darker? And it, they didn't even have the audacity to call it What If Dark, but they do now because Marvel was like, ooh, we need to get make What If working. So they tapped Chip Zdarsky, he came up with a whole system, a, a logo, new branding, and did Spider Shadow, which we've done on the show, and it's a fantastic book. Uh, and then they abandoned it entirely, and now they're just going to the well to do What If Dark. And they're grabbing the logo from the 90s comic, putting it up there, and then just putting the word dark after it. And I'm like, who's stealing from who at this point? Because clearly Tales of the Dark Multiverse is a What If comic. But right. like, but it's in the Dark Multiverse, so it has to have a bad ending. Like, oh no, everything mm -hmm. sucks. Because otherwise it wouldn't be in the Dark Multiverse, it would be in the DC Multiverse. Uh, unlike in the Marvel Universe, where every What If comic actually is an Earth in the Multiverse. But then, after Tales of the Dark Multiverse came and went, because I don't think there's any more of those, Marvel is now going to do a What If Dark! And I'm like, you already did that! <laughs> and it was just a whole stretch where they were just like, What If Dark? But we're not going to tell you it's going to be dark. It just is. You're just reading it. You're like, oh my god. Like the, we did one on one of our sister shows, uh, The Good, Bad, and the Ugly, which Spider-Man, just if he got bit by a radioactive spider, he turns into a horrible monster spider. Right, yeah. And it's just like, that's, oh my god, this is really dark. And they're like, yeah, you like it? What if? And I'm like, okay. Yeah. I don't want it, though. I, I don't. What about this one? It's a book about domestic violence starring the Hulk. I, I really don't want that. Well, here it is. And then in the same breath, they're like, oh, and also here's Mayday Parker. What if she didn't die? That's not dark. Yeah, we just owed DeFalco a favor. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just kind of forgot about that idea. But anyway. Yeah, tell me about this. Because the issue they put in here yeah. for context is the last issue. Yes, because it's kind of where it takes place. Okay. Is in the end of... So you're going to give the context for all of this. Yeah. Or not. Uh, oh, because you're just going to give them the last issue. Precisely. Here's the last five minutes of a movie. You'll figure You'll it out. You'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll just release the alternate ending of movies in theaters. How about that? So, of course, Tempest Fugonaut gives his whole spiel about balance and multiverses in the darkness. Shut up, Tempest. Behold, whatever. I must find my hero. He, he doesn't even talk about finding the hero. Because I don't care <laughs> about it anymore. It's clearly not uh, here. I, 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 I selectively <laughs> don't care about it depending on who's writing it. You know, sometimes he does, like with Superwoman. Sometimes I really care. And other times he is conveniently good Other times I, I look into the universe and I'm like, is Pry here? Never mind. <laughs> Pry is here. And it's pathetic. I as know. it should be. He better be there. Yeah, right? But don't worry, he doesn't do anything. Uh, just like in War of the Gods. So, Tempest attempts, and by Tempest I mean Vida Ayala, to contextualize War of the Gods in okay. what, what do we, six captions. What do we got? I love that in his context he goes, my name is Tempest Fugida. I'm like, we get it! I know you're Tempest Fugida. Hello. Hey, so, stop trying to get working. If the Watcher can introduce himself every time, so can I. Right, yeah, he always does say, I am the Watcher. But he never says, I'm Uatu. He never actually identifies himself by anyway. Well, he kind of, but he like sort of wraps his, who he is into like what he's doing as yes, well. Yes, that's true, yeah. Like, well, I'm the Watcher, I'm watching. I have to watch. But I can only watch. Well, and I'm, yeah, I'm compelled. Tempest Fugonaut is just like, I don't know what you're doing. And neither does he. And then he <laughs> dies. So, anyway, uh, he talks about how the War of the God raged uh, different pantheons, you know, battled their counterparts for supremacy. Yeah, okay, and yes. I'm like, really? For supremacy? Okay. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> well, they thought they were doing it for that right. reason. So, there was subterfuge, but technically. Yeah. And then in the middle were the superheroes who got caught up in their war. Uh, okay. Diana fought Captain Marvel. Yes, for a little bit. Uh huh. For like no. a very small amount of time. Yep. No, but, that's apparently very important here. But this is all orchestrated by Cersei. Yes. And there is a prophecy that Cersei's trying to capitalize on in order to unleash Hecate. N not quite. In which, according to the tale of the. Well, you know, uh, Tiffany, it's in the Dark Multiverse. We, we, it, it, yes, it looks like War of the Gods, but. <laughs> Uh, it conveniently leaves out things yeah, so that it can be distinctly different. I thought, okay, so I, uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding, which is, this was supposed to be one of those things where it's like, there, that's the thing that's that changes it. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so that is absolutely how it should be, but no. 
No, like it, where it's like, there's no it's internal what logic. you know until this didn't happen the way it was supposed to. Yeah, I wish that were the case. That okay. is exactly how it should work, but I, I fully admit that it isn't. Like okay. it, it only works that way sometimes if the writer feels like going that far. But more often than not, they just go, uh, 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 Nightfall! Here's my version. Jean Paul Valley right. is this, and it's just like, oh, that's not even close. And it's like, yeah, but you still had a good time. And it's like, admittedly, yeah, that was kind of. Fun. Yeah, it was. You still paid two bucks for it. Yeah, exactly, just more like seven. <laughs> what Diana does not understand is that Captain Marvel's mind is clouded by magic, controlled against his will by Cersei, and prophecy is the thread that binds Diana and Cersei's destinies together, pulled as tight as the noose by Hecate. Okay. Yes. Okay. But Hecate's machinations go farther than her battle, uh, that is to say Diana's battle with Captain Marvel. It also infects the minds and hearts of the US military and the Banna McDoll from the uh, other group of uh, Amazonians. Yes. R yes, asterisk. Uh, and through Cersei, you know, the, uh, the Banna McDoll were uh, weaponized to turn public opinion against the Amazonians. Yes, to all of that. And yes. Themyscira was revealed to man's world and that man responded negatively because it's like an island of warrior women and they are doing bad things or at least we're meant to think that they are uh, aggressors. Yeah. It's interesting because it's, it's strange because this is all, yes, this all happened. Right. But like the biggest thing that Cersei's trying to do is like to position herself so that Hecate can come forth and like utilize the objects that they've collected yes. and then rewrite reality. So that she's the main god. Yeah, but that like in doing so, she would unmake herself and everyone else right. and like it wouldn't work any, uh, how, the way anyone wants. And yeah. when Cersei realizes that, she's like, no, 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 uh, no, no. Well, none of that happens and the items are gone. Cool. Things get out of hand and then there's a great moment that I really want to just kind of tangent off with Tiffany uh, for, for this one, where they talk about how the avatars of every pantheon imaginable stand to bear witness to the battle for Diana's soul. We just, we go like, yeah, this stuff, a bunch of stuff happens, but then a Hecate is unleashed in the form of this like purple blobby god thing. Why does it look like Gengar has showed up? Because <laughs> that's what Hecate looks like in the comic, maybe? Because she's a ghost Pokemon? Yeah. I, I, I would not have, okay. I guess it's just her energy. Let's yeah. just go with that. It's just her energy. Right. I don't care for that. Yeah, that's what they they make Hecate look like that. She's like, a she's a she's a, cy that, a cyclone. Yeah, that's like her energy. I guess. Well, anyway, sorry, 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 sorry. But what I, I wanted to focus on really quick is just that when we see the reference to the pantheon, we've got Doctor Fate, Captain Marvel, Hawk Girl, and Lobo, and that just reminded me of this theory that Tiffany had that I really love, and I know you don't because. Even you didn't like it, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't necessarily care for it because Lobo should not be anywhere near the Endless, regardless of his like um, tone, like the way he how he looks, how he looks. Oh, the fact that he's got very white skin. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but that, like, because destruction of one of the Endless is has abandoned his realm, mm -hmm. that like Lobo could fill that spot. Yeah, or, that, like Lobo is destruction of the Endless. And uh, that, like, he went off and, he went, like, yeah, he went rogue, yeah, and became like a character in the DC universe, yeah, that's pretty funny. I kind of love it, I hate it, and I want to see like the Lobo version of destruction that belongs in the endless, like, you know, when you see them all like kind of lined up or hanging out, and it's like Lobo's there, and, and he, but he, we he, all he strip I, away his like biker gang kind of look, yeah, but that's it. We, I don't know, we do know what happens to destruction, so okay. it doesn't really work at all, but like, in a in a in this universe, sure. But I love the theory really, that, that Lobo I, is secretly destruction. But like, it's really weird that he would be there as like an avid, like, wh why are you there? I, uh, there I mean, was, he's, he plays a role in this book. Oh, I agree. Like in this book, he's in this, he, yeah, does, he does quite a bit. And he's in this as well, but he doesn't do he anything. He does stuff. But stuff is done. It also hurt, doesn't hurt because uh, Lobo, I guess, sells books. I don't know. For, so like when is Lobo's this, in a lot of these Tales When is this happening? Like, has Diana died and then come back at Yeah, this she's point? already died, okay. she already came back, okay, and now cool. she's fighting Hecate, but she's not a cyclone like she is in War of the Gods. Now she's Gengar. And sure, Wonder sure. Woman throws her lasso of truth around Hecate, and then they, both of them enter Diana's mind, which looks like Themyscira slash Athens. And uh, so Wonder Woman and Hecate face off. Sure. And uh, Hecate reveals that, like, now that I'm in your mind, 
I can take root and take over and then do what I want because Cersei already died like literally off panel and we don't even mention it. We just say that the prophecy is that like with the death of a witch may Hecate rise, that kind of thing. Isn't this witching hour? Yes. And now it's War of the Gods. I mean, it's not exactly it. It's but, not exactly, but, no. But, but it, it is it, essentially it, like co-opting both both Wonder Woman events yeah. into one thing set in like the late 80s, early 90s. Okay. But yeah, so uh, Wonder Woman says that she'll defeat her. You know, just throws out the, I'll defeat you, you, you're evil, and I am good, and I will defeat you. Yeah, I won't succumb. Yeah, so she immediately succumbs. So literally, okay, so the reason they put in the last issue then is because the difference here is is this. Like, yes. the, the, Wonder Woman lasts. This is Hecate. happening in between here, uh -huh. except like typically she wins out. Yes. Oh, so it's because she took the form of Gengar that she was able to defeat her. Yeah, instead of being a cyclone, She's Gengar, and so that was the that was the that was the switch. Well, yeah, I mean, like, she, I don't know if she had the right Pokeball. Yeah, well, I mean, she was using a lasso, but so you know, she lassos Hecate, which enters uh, Wonder Woman's mind, and so the two like they just talk to each other for a minute, and Hecate's like, "I'm too powerful, and I'm gonna I'm gonna win." And Wonder Woman's like, "You're in my world now, bitch," <laughs> and like that it would be cool and awesome if it mattered or actually had any bearing on the story, but it doesn't. Like Wonder Woman's like, "You're in my mind. I brought you here for a reason because I'm pure and I'm good and I'm going to defeat you." Yeah, and, and this is my mind exactly. And Hecate, I'm like, never stronger than here. That's the conceit, and Hecate is like, "But I am Hecate, though, and so I already won." And so she did. And so uh, what we see instead is Wonder Woman like try and battle against her and everyone else is kind of left to look at her like they do in War of the Gods. Uh, but there are fewer characters uh, here than there. Like Orion is in the original one, he's not here now. Yeah. Uh, but everyone just looks at her while she goes Aah! and then like energy seems to blast out of her and uh, no, uh, Hecate has taken root within Wonder Woman. They battle. So now she'll rewrite reality so that she is the. Yeah, no. Actually, that is not Hecate's plan, because she changed her mind after she was Gengar. She, she changed her mind when she entered Diana's mind. That's right. So, <laughs> yeah, actually quite a bit of minds are being changed at this moment, but uh, so. Okay. So Wonder Woman, like, is unleashed as Hecate in the real world. Like, like, in, the he like in the witching hour. Like in the witching hour, exactly. But she doesn't look like she did in the witching hour. Oh. I mean, but it's distinctly, like 25% more distinct. Okay. I didn't so, realize Hecate made people also look like Lobos. Yeah, it's just, she's not quite white. She's well, more like bluish. Well, hang on. How do we not have the witching hour stuff here with us? Because that wasn't cited in this, <laughs> in this tale from the Dark Multiverse. Well, hang on a second then. That'd be so great if Tempest Fugonaut was like, and then things kind of get like the witching hour, which was a Justice League Dark book, which we have over here. Oh, <laughs> let's look at that. Except he doesn't really look at it. He just goes there. Or he alludes to it, I don't know. Is it there only one Tempest Fugonaut? Yeah, there's only one. Well, okay. he's he's actually part of a race of Fugonauts. There are multiple Fugonauts. Behold uh, the race of Fugonauts. Uh, we got Tempest Fugonaut and uh, Marcus Fugonaut. <laughs> yeah, Brutus Fugonaut. <laughs> yeah, and you know. And Dingus Fugonaut. Exactly, who is the main Tempest Fugonaut. But uh, yeah, no, in fact, when they unceremoniously murder Tempest Fugonaut in like an action comics backup, um, they discover him, like his body, and he's already been dead. And they refer to him as a Fugonaut. And so I was like, oh no. Internally, that is Tempest Fugonaut, the dead one. Like, we can't use him anymore because he died in the Superman story. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay, but couldn't that be the Tempest Fugonaut that died in the Tales from the Dark right. Multiverse? Yeah, that's, that's another tale. That's another Tempest. Maybe we get the Dark Multiverse version of Tempest Fugonaut, who's like, hey, what are you doing in my house? <laughs> <laughs> Quit telling people my stories! Now, that being said, regarding okay. uh, Wonder Woman's possession <clears throat> by Hecate okay. and its resemblance to the witching hour, yet no citation uh, here. Yeah. Uh, it could be that maybe because Hecate doesn't infect Wonder Woman in War of the Gods, but she does in witching hour, we know what a possessed Wonder Woman looks like. Sure. Thanks to the witching hour, so I'll borrow from that. I mean, it could just be that, like, if you're possessed by her, that's what you, that's what you look like. Yeah, that's uh, except, what's gonna happen. And it, remember, it's not a one to one. It's not a one to one. But she does like have like slightly different armor and well, yeah, and her and her skin is different. But anyway, so in the real world, Wonder Woman is like freaking out as Hecate, just attacking people. 
Right. In Wonder Woman's mind, she thinks she's defeating Hecate. Which, of course, she actually is because that's really Hecate and Wonder Woman fighting. Huh. So maybe, like, there's Hecate's subconscious piloting Wonder Woman, but it, it, we don't really have enough page real estate to get into how it works. All we do know is Hecate is piloting Wonder Woman and simultaneously fighting Wonder Woman in Wonder Woman's mind. Well, it's interesting because we're seeing Hecate, but it's only the one face of her. Because mm. Hecate is, is often the three-faced goddess. I see. You that know? does not come up in the story. But I'm just saying, like, maybe that's... Oh, it could be, yeah. Like, the face maybe, that, uh, that yeah, pilots she, bodies is not... using Wonder Woman right now. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't come up. Okay. I, and I'm not complaining. I'm just no. saying it's not in this. Okay. Did she, like, take her face off? <laughs> her, you mean to say she took her face off? Yeah. The eyes, the nose, the lips. It's coming off. <laughs> so Wonder Woman, uh, I don't know, she she calls down by the honor of Grey Skull a lightning bolt, which in the mindscape, and then cracooms the ground, and then casts Hecate into it. See now, that's the kind of stuff where I'm just like, is that good? Is that well, bad? And that's the thing, right? Yeah, Wonder Woman's that's like bad. Wonder Woman's like, I don't know how to purge you because I'm bad at this. So I'll just apparently. bury you in my subconscious. So I'll bury you in my subconscious until like Doctor Fate or whatever could get you out. And Hecate is like, and like a seed, I shall grow within your mind. And also, I'm literally piloting you though, but don't worry about that. So she's it, inside Wonder Woman's subconscious. If she says that, I feel like Wonder Woman should be like, never oh, mind. Never mind. Huh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a, an ear hole and shove you out of it. Yeah, no, but Wonder Woman is like, well, that's all. As well that ends well. So then Wonder Woman just suddenly is in control of her body now that Hecate is in a crevasse. And she lost her cape. And her cape went away because that was a magic cape that came out only when Hecate is possessing her. That's the best kind of cape. And so she's like, hey, sorry I kicked your ass, everybody. And they're all like, what happened? And she's like, I'm fine. And they're like, you are not. Like, even effing Captain Marvel. Captain Whitebread is like, you are not fine. Like, Lobo is like, no. Like, this this chick is is is, is cracked. And I don't have to worry about it because I'm Lobo, so see you later. And he leaves. Right. And everyone's if Lobo like, says you're damaged, that's, that's a, a sign. That is that is straight up a red flag for you. So then we check in with this general in Bedford, Massachusetts, which is where like most of the Wonder Woman book is taking place, mm -hmm. uh, with characters like Steve Trevor and Anna Candy, and this general, who it turns out is not actually the general at all, but is in fact Phobos, god of fear, who is working for Hecate and is doing her bidding through a secret magic hourglass that can communicate with Hecate within Wonder Woman's subconscious. Well, that's convenient. Isn't it? So then... What uh, is her bidding? Are we going to find that out? Like, yeah. what, what's her plan? Right, what is her because, plan? Because like, I, the Wonder I Wo know what her plan is here. Yeah. Like, she's like, no, I got treated like trash. Yeah, right. And I'm tired of being treated like trash. So it's seem... time for me to be in charge. Okay, so there, there is... A, 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 and rewrite reality, thus undoing everything, okay, including the, myself. The, re <laughs> the reality rewriting is just off the table. That right. Is, that is but not like, even that's, referenced in that's, the That's That's like that a is huge her thing. big thing. Yes. But arguably, we don't really get to see what her initial plan was because like in earlier this story, she changes her mind. Right. Does like, she literally say like, mm, never mind? E kind of. Okay. And you'll see why when All right. she faces the gods. Hey, hey, Tiffany, has uh, Hecate ever used an hourglass before for With a teeth symbol on it? or a thing? Um, I mean, no. Is there a communications tool that it resembles an hourglass <laughs> that is in War of the Gods? I don't believe so. I think you're right. Because I feel like an hourglass is a very bizarre item to use. Because, like, <laughs> if the sand runs out, does that mean she's expelled? Yeah, like, do what, I have to constantly keep flipping it? What's the what's the symbology if I flip here? It, does it reverse rolls? What's going on with this? Yeah. Well, also, you know, it's so distinct looking, and it has teeth on it. You'd think, like, uh, General, uh, before I leave, what's up with the evil hourglass? <sighs> evil hourglass? This is a gift from my wife. Why is there a hideous face in it that's talking to you right now? It's the face of my wife. <laughs> oh, the general who is secretly Phobos. Uh, proceeds to lay down some orders where he's like, the Amazonian We're going to Mars. We're opening up a hell portal hell. Yeah. We're going to get some space marines there. <laughs> like, 
because his name is Phobos. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Uh, that would make the story a little more fun. Uh, instead, he's just like, the Amazonians are public enemy number one. You know, originally in the War of the Gods, we kind of like that's smoothed that over. Well, yeah. instead, no. They're bad. They're enemies of the state. We're declaring war on them. Also, get Steve Trevor in here. And Steve Trevor comes in and he goes, you're a traitor. Blam. And kills him. Maybe because he dies, but we don't see it because we don't have enough pages or panels to showcase that. But like, he is dead though, because we see his body later, kind of. Uh, the, uh, the art is fine, but I think the, the, the artist needed more, they, they just needed more room to be able to tell the story. Maybe because, a few more pages. Because like, War of the Gods, it's kind of big. Wait, wait a minute. This uh, this isn't the general. This is a guy working for the general. Oh, you're right. There's I not apologize. even well because and the reason you thought that though is because we're in this office and there's this door here and then this door opens again and it's yes, but it's some oh, it's, but you know this guy funny. has left. No, but you see, I'm an idiot because I didn't notice the slightly gray temples on the new guy who's in the same position as the previous guy. So Steve Trevor dies and then he's like, and get Edda Candy in here too, and she just she dies off panel without even a, a reference to her. But so that's that. And then they scramble the jets to. Go to Themyscira, which of course now is revealed to man's world. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, on oh, they scramble like four jets. Yeah, it's only like four jets or so. They you understand? They've got bows and arrows. We'll destroy them. <laughs> Exactly, they're so primitive. There's actually a little bit of opposition by some American forces and they are dispatched by just really overzealous members of the uh, US military. Uh, so they, they, they- Everyone's getting called a traitor in this book. Uh, they, they say that a lot. It doesn't really come up for any good reason. Uh, so on Themyscira, Wonder Woman and Shaira are chatting. Uh, Shire, that is. Uh, I know Hawk who Girl. Shire is. <laughs> no, you know. <laughs> Said it for their benefit. Well, so so Wonder Woman and Shire are walking the beaches of Themyscira. Oh, you and, mean Hawk Girl? Oh, that's correct. Yes, uh, I, I know who Hawk Girl is. Okay, I watched us sleep. <laughs> are you sure she's Hawk Girl? Because it looks like she's got the Thundercats logo on her chest. Also, she's called Hawk Woman in this. Um, I love Shire. They're chatting, and Wonder Woman's like, "I'm fine." It's just like this. This book might as well called Wonder Woman. I'm fine, and uh, she is not fine. Wonder Woman, why would you tell me what's wrong? <laughs> so uh, the Jets show up and they just start dropping bombs and blowing Themyscira to hell. You said, hold on, you said Pariah's in this. He is. Where the hell is he? You'll see him twice. He was in that fight and like there's a really good reason he's there in this. Yeah, he's not in this for any reason and he doesn't do anything. So when you said there's, I mean, a, there's a good reason he's in this, yeah. you lied to him. I mean, I listen, did. He's, <laughs> he's a whiny bitch in this too, but like the reason everyone else is concerned that he's there is valid because he's a harbinger. Yes, that's right. Because he was the harbinger of the original crisis. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he is a harbinger in this. He is used visually as a device. But he should have been there and people should have been like, yo, what, 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 what yeah, are we doing now? Yeah, but he's not. Okay. No, we'll see him twice towards the end of the story and it'll be in a very recognizable form. Oh, okay. So the jets are dropping bombs. Look at, I know. Look at the Amazon's it's, getting blown to bits. This is, You're asked to truncate something that was this big, into make it like, like tiny, so it's like everything's got like a panel. Yeah. I, the, I do not envy this artist having to do this. To I feel like, bad because like I think they are good at their job, but they also cut a lot of corners. Yeah. So Themyscira is shelled and uh, Hippolyta dies. Like a column falls on her or something. Oh. So Wonder Woman is really mad, and that's just what Hecate needs, because Hecate does prophesy that when Wonder Woman's super mad or upset or weak, then Hecate will take root in Wonder Woman's psyche. She oh. already took root. She literally got buried in her subconscious. Yeah, but now I'm gonna be more powerful because you're mad. So Wonder Woman in- well, this is, I mean, like that's, in, that's fitting that she would die here. Right. Because in this one, Diana dies in front of her mother and her mother's like, Grieved, which did even. happen already. Okay, so all right. So it's like poetry, it rhymes. Sure. So Wonder Woman like throws herself into the battle, uh, egged on by Hecate, who is projected behind her to like whisper in her ear. Like Hecate takes the form of Wonder Woman's subconscious and whispers terrible thoughts into her ear, as though to say them. Like Wonder Woman's coming the up worst her. Jiminy Cricket ever. <laughs> yeah. hey, didn't that bury you in the ground? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, she doesn't recognize her as Hecate, even though she absolutely is and has special lettering to denote that it is her. Absolutely. Hey, go go kill those guys. <laughs> Trust me. I'm just trying to go to the path that rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm mixing my metaphors, but I don't care. Hey, it works. So Wonder Woman kills uh, those dudes, and then uh, they have a big pyre for Hippolyta and a few members of the Justice League show up to like pay their respects and, and also like see what's going on. And they're like, hey, did you just kill like a bunch of dudes? Oh yeah, no, they're definitely like that. 
And she's like, yeah, what of it? You know? Yeah, you want to go? So the, the, the My Superman, subconscious is telling me I could take you. <laughs> and she's right. The voice inside of my heart says that I could definitely take you. Right? So th they show up, they pay their respects. Superman takes Wonder Woman aside along with Zatanna. And he's like, hey, like, can we help? Like, what can we do to help? And she's like, nothing, just leave me alone. And Zatanna I'm doing great. And Zatanna just goes, I don't think that's such a good idea. Like, sometimes you've said that the best way to grieve is with, like, help and support. Yeah, with so, friends. So, so, no, actually, we're not going to go anywhere. And she's like, you should. And, like, you just see that the words are coming from Wonder Woman, but Hecate is there looming. So, and, and also, uh, her crown seems to be glowing, so maybe it's like, like it's a, it's a, it's just projecting her thoughts. No, it means her Wi-Fi is on. That's well, that's true. interesting too because Zatanna played a big. I mean, she plays a role in this, but she she plays a huge role in Witching Hour because she was on Justice League Dark. That's true. Well, she plays kind of a big role in this as well. Okay. Uh, where she's just like, hey, you fought Hecate. You're having a hard time. You're angry and hurting. You lost your mom. We we need to like you know share notes and talk and 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 you need time to grieve and. You know, and like you can't run Themyscira right. in the state that you're in right now. Exactly. So let us help. Yeah. So th she's just like, no, Themyscira is over. Like the Amazonians have left. They've integrated into man's world. Like it's it's over. Hippolyta's dead. Themyscira is no more. Everybody go away and leave me alone. Yeah, we're all done here now. Thanks. Yeah. So she leaves and then goes to the one pilot she left alive and tied up with the lasso of truth to interrogate him before she murders him. Sure. Why not? That's what you do. I mean, if you tied someone up with the lasso of truth, interrogation goes pretty quickly. Exactly. Uh, so uh, she immediately goes. <laughs> Tell me everything. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So I was born. In okay. A stop. <laughs> Tell me everything about what your mission. So she goes to the general, and she's like, "You're Phobos," and he's like, "Nah, it's true. I am Phobos." Yeah, I know. I said that already. And so he's like, I've listened to everything you've instructed my queen. What is your bidding next? And she's like, "Uh, what are you talking about, man?" And he's like, I work for, for, for you, Hecate. I'm doing your bidding. And she's like, uh, I don't know if you got the memo, but like, I beat Hecate in my mind and I planted her like a seed in my subconscious, which is definitely a metaphor for having completely destroyed and defeated and her. And I said I was gonna get like Dr. Fate to help me out. No, I gotta put that on my to-do list. Ooh, yeah. But she doesn't and doesn't even think any of those things. She's just like, you're an idiot because you think that Hecate is taking hold of me and she's not. And he's like- Yeah, I'm totally in control. Right, and so Phobos is like, well, I can look at your aura and I can see that Hecate is like 98% controlling you. And she's like, no, you're a liar and I'll use my lasso truth to prove it. And he's like, Phobos, all right. He's like, I'm why, are you, why are you showing your hand, man? I, 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 because we don't have enough time. Yeah, and why is, he's, he is swole. I know, he is, he is yoked, as they <laughs> say. Uh, but yeah, so then, I love it. Like, he's talking about like how, how Hecate is in charge. He just tells Wonder Woman, like, I'm not even talking to you. Like, I'm talking through you to Hecate, I guess. And uh, to make you more mad, here are some top secret files I have that tell you that Steve Trevor and Etta Candy were like traitors to the state and were executed. And it's like, what? Why would you need these files? Meanwhile, hey, Hecate- Hey, Wonder Woman, look at this little uh, hourglass I have. Who's in there, do you think? <laughs> That doesn't even come up. I don't even think the hourglass is on the table anymore. It's not. Good. They got rid of it. It was dumb. You know, he probably had the files, though, because he's like, I don't know how I'm going to pretend to be this general. I better come up with some sort of cover story that's in order true. to justify why we did all that. I mean, that's true. Uh, yeah. Here. So she's like, oh, my God, you killed Stephen out of candy. That's sad. And then uh, you see Hecate within, like, the crevasse, which is, like, what, a good 11 feet away uh, from the from from freedom and she's like yeah and she's got like a bonfire gouge she's like yeah your your hate is smoldering now Ooh. those are the neurons firing in her brain yeah we're getting a good fire going here and so she's so sad and so upset uh, and then Phobos like shows her, or maybe we just flash to uh, Steve Trevor's dead body. Uh, but she's so upset and sad that she starts crying. And <laughs> Look, it's over here. <laughs> <laughs> she's like having a crisis of herself. She's like, oh God, no, I'm crying. And Phobos is like, yes, Hecate, I worship you, you are great. And so she immediately becomes Hecate. Oh yes, you're an all powerful god. Oh yes, oh yes, you're an all powerful god. So you know, Wonder Woman is now Hecate, and she's like, ha ha, Hecate is reborn in the body of Diana of the Mascara. Blah, blah. We see the mindscape, and Hecate throws Wonder Woman in the same crevice, and she's like, "There you go. You can't hurt How do you it? like it? How do you can't like being she in there? Grow from there? Then? Absolutely not. It's not like the what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So she's like, "Oh yes, and like a weed, I will fester in my own mind. Like, no, that you used a move 
that like you thought was against me, but actually is a move that I would use against you. It's so so one one gets thrown into a hole, and uh, she's like, "Taha!" And you'll never get out. And one one's like, "I have hope," and she's like, "Hope is the whatever. Who cares? You lose." So then, Hecate. I mean, this is a dark tales from the or tales, tales from, from the, the dark multiverse. I wonder when he's gonna get out easily. No, no, of course not. Uh, so Hecate goes to Olympus. Uh, Phobos sets up a meeting, and so and uh, everyone's like, "Let's trust him." <laughs> yeah. So they do. Hey, and, hey, uh, I'm allowed to call the meeting. I'm a I god. Am still Phobos. Yeah, I, I still technically have a vote, and so Wonder Woman as Hecate with like a scythe or something like a like a. I don't know. What would you call this weapon? It's just more like a sharp hook. Yeah, it's yeah, a sickle. It's a sickle, you're right. Uh, so she wields this, like, sickle, which is not special in any way. It's just a sickle that she wields now. Uh, you know, maybe she it's made it forged from something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but she and Phobos are there, and uh, and Phobos is like, Grandfather, you belittle and, and, and make fun of me. Like, this is why I betrayed you. Because you never gave me any, like, any credibility? I, I'm I'm supposed to be the god of fear. That's lame, and you and you suck. And, and now here's Hecate to kill you. And so she starts killing people, and then sucking their faces off and absorbing their power. Oh, because she has to replace the face she lost. <laughs> right, because she's the Benny. She's missing those uh, two faces. That's right. Uh, so yeah, she's just sucking in their, their their themselves and into. She's drawing them into herself and killing these these gods. And uh, she finds that they are not terribly nourishing. Also, uh, well, yeah, no, gods are a lot of empty calories. It's true. Uh, we also see that she's like slashing one guy, which suggests that she must have slashed like a lot of them because Zeus is like wounded, but we never got any uh, panel showing him get wounded. So we just have to take for granted the but idea. We don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. We got to get to the end of the story. No I want to get this out. Just... Zeus is actually playing uh, uh, possum. Possum. He's like, oh no! Oh, he was yeah. eating tomatoes. He's like, like oh, oh, Oh no, oh, oh no, I'm already dead, you already got me, you don't have to get me again! <laughs> Hecate uh, yells at Zeus because the gods that she's killed are uh, not nourishing enough. She's like, what the hell, these guys aren't, uh, aren't, aren't, aren't feeding me. And Zeus is like, you idiot, uh, nobody worships us anymore, it's like 1987 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't say what year it is. I don't recall what year Wonder Woman War of the Gods came out. But he's like, nobody worships us anymore. Now they worship the superheroes. And they're like the new gods. And she's like, oh. So Wonder Woman is doing all this for a snack. Yeah, basically. Oh, Hecate's doing Well, that's well, that's what her thing is. She was trying to get more power. It's all of her more power? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Right. No, she's not going to rewrite reality. That's gone. Nor does she even say, my plan was to rewrite reality, but maybe I'll just rule it. Yeah. No, well, maybe I want to rewrite reality, but I can't my, yet. I'm not powerful my enough. My plan was to rewrite yeah. reality, but then when the Phantom Stranger pointed out that that's not going to work out the way I wanted it to, okay, I mean, I'll do this instead. Yeah, I mean, maybe. So uh, she kills the Pantheon and then, uh, oh, and doesn't like immediately betray Phobos, which I fully expected. Uh, basically, she pretends to be Diana. You don't look like Diana. At all. So she <laughs> pretends to be Diana, and oh, and her voice sounds like Hecate. <laughs> and so, but she put, she pouts her lips, and she puts out her hands in kind of like a Smiles messianic a ma manner, and is like, my sisters. Like she kind of, she tries, and we don't even see how she does this. We just see that she projects herself or reaches each one of them individually. Who cares? But she she calls out to her sisters, like, rise up and kill everyone. Uh, excuse me, your voice sounds like bone needles scratching against the ether. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm what? Diana. I'm totally Wonder Woman. Um, I've gotten this far just on how I look, which of course you see is my rosy, pale, dead skin. I just lost my mother. Cut me some slack. Exactly. Oh, okay. Um, I'm bereaved. Oh, so you're, that's clearly not. Diana, right, yeah. No. So, <laughs> uh, no one. So, everyone's just like, look, it may not be Diana, but I'm kind of sick of following them anyway. Yeah, exactly. Let's so, ruin man's world! So the, yeah, so the women, like, rise up, they get their, like, AK 47s and start killing people. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Superman and Batman, like, go to, I don't know, the local court system and go, hey, um, you know, Wonder Woman's going through a hard time. <laughs> Can we file an injunction or something? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, Wonder Woman unites the Band of McDowell and the displaced Amazonians, and uh, so they attack. And then she goes to the White House and she uses her Hecate powers to pick up Olympus and drop it on top of Washington, D.C., or the White House, or not. Like, it's just, 
we see her arrive at the White House, and of course it's all like Grecian inspired, so it makes sense that we'd, we'd merge these two ideas. Uh, but then picks up Olympus and then drops it. But I guess the White House is destroyed because nobody goes to the White House, except we also see that like the front door of the White House is the same. So, you know, whatever. Well, now the White House is just part of Olympus. Exactly. Like, they incorporate the White House into Olympus. But that would mean she'd have to, like, pick up the White House, pick up Olympus, put down Olympus, and then put the White House down on top of it. Like, we no, don't it just see... drops Olympus right behind the ah, White House. Ah, I like that. Okay, just yeah. right behind right, it. Right behind it. You know like, what the problem really is? It. Is that, like, we see, like, the, like, curved colonnade yeah, here, and then, and then it's, it's different. It's, it's pitched, maybe and they, you're like, maybe what? They, maybe they change the front. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, to make it a little more Grecian. Yeah, they're like, it's got to fit in. Right? Keep the building as it is, but change that front. Exactly. not working for it's me. Gotta, it's got to fit the motif. Uh, so then she, like, sets up base here. She's in charge now. The Just League shows up, and they're like, we're going to have to talk to Wonder Woman. The Just League shows up, and no one's like, something's wrong, right? Remember that whole thing where she was acting funny? Right? No. Uh, so they all show up, and Wonder Woman's there. She's got, like, a throne like she does on the cover. And... Uh, She's like, hello, my friends. And Superman's like, hey, like, listen, Diana, I know you're going through a lot, but like, we can help you. Like, we can still walk this back. And I'm like, maybe, Dude. Maybe you shouldn't have attacked the capital of the US. Yeah. Batman's like, hey, as long as it's not Gotham. R exactly. Hey, Wonder Woman, why does your voice sound like a, a thousand screaming ghosts against a moonless night? <laughs> No reason. I don't know what you mean. So Batman just goes, you're not Diana. Like, so who are you inhabiting Diana's body? Like, please. Yeah. Which I appreciate him drew him doing, but I don't know if, like, the Batman of this time period would have, would have been, like, the Batman of today. Hey, hey, why do you look like the Diana who laughs? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. Or, like, Lobo. Right? <laughs> so she's like, yeah, I'm Hecate. And they're like, what? And then so she's like, and now you're here. <laughs> All right, jigs up. <laughs> yeah, right? She's like, I've drawn you here so I could kill you, take your power, and be more powerful. Uh, so Batman, like, sneaks up behind her, and he's going to stab her with a spear. And Flash stops uh, him. A spear. Yep, just a spear. Maybe it's like a special magic enchanted spear. We don't have time to explain it. So Flash like, no, Batman, she's still our friend. And then Hecate grabs Flash and then sucks his face off. Meanwhile, uh, while she's doing that, tears fall down her face, suggesting that Wonder Woman is somewhere inside of her. Enough to make her cry, but not enough to make her not eat Wally's face. <laughs> well, I know. Yeah, so he dies. So Diana and Wally Wait, are sucking he, face. Isn't he... The fastest man alive. Right? Shouldn't he be able to vibrate or something? Yes. I mean, I know it's against, like, magic, but she doesn't really seem to be using magic, well, which Hecate really should be using magic. Yes, and it, during this Other time... Other than the face sucking? During this time, Wally is still kind of, like, we're still rounding out who Wally is. Okay. Or at least Wally as the Flash. But anyway, he dies. Batman... I mean, Superman's there. Isn't he super fast? Yeah, but not fast enough to save anybody, and he's, like, a chump. So Batman tries to attack her she immediately breaks his arm and then kills him off panel it looks like he's using the spear in a way no human being should use a spear yeah i'll hit you in the head with it yeah, yeah. it looks like he's trying to Clong. Her. yeah there's a sharp end up there man oh so right she kills guy in like and, and and blue beetle and eats fire and stuff like that it just these are characters she's killing and then she's like oh and who are you captain adam like maybe i'll kill you and you're like oh she's cutting everybody with the sickle maybe she's gonna cut at captain adam and it'll explode like literally everybody who writes a story about captain adam yeah thinks to do but no instead superman's like all right diana i'm sorry but i have to stop you and so he uses his might and he's like this is over so he attacks her and while he's like beating the shit out of Diana slash Hecate, Diana is climbing out of the hole. Why is that, that hole like herself. even longer than? Oh, I, I, okay. So I interpreted this as it keeps getting longer. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah. would love that. I like that. No, I, I, we're in the mindscape. <laughs> I'm down for that. I'm giving the credit. All right, fair enough. Check. So then Martian Manhunter grabs Diana and sticks his like hands on her head and holds her there, like psychically, I guess, and allows Wonder Woman to come free. And Wonder Woman in- Oh, thank God. I thought it was like, here, I'm holding her. It's a free shot. <laughs> Just keep bumping right in the kisser. <laughs> so- Just Dian keep her face in. Diana's crying. She's like, you have to kill me. Stop me, like, while you still can. So then uh, immediately Hecate takes over, kills John, and then uh, Superman goes to kill her, I guess, because he says, I'm sorry, as he's flying at her. And then she just goes, Nip! And pulls his heart out. And she's like, ha ha, you're weak against magic. And against the Kalima. <laughs> so that's, that's that for Superman. His heart gets pulled out of his chest. So then all the magic characters show up. Hi, sorry we're late. Hi, I'm Phantom Stranger. I'm pretty Dr. sure Dr. Sonic was there already. 
Zipporah is everyone alive? Was there, but she also, like, I guess, helped the other guys get there. Are we all okay? I think we got here just in time. Oh my god. Oh, this is bad. Hey, whose heart is that? So she's like, behold, I already sucked off all the members of the Justice League. And, uh, and Zatanna's like, okay, well now we'll have to attack you. And so while Diana is climbing, Hecate is like standing on the precipice, like laughing at her and saying a bunch of nonsense, who cares? And then uh, the magic characters that showed up, which includes like Madame Xanadu and Phantom Stranger and Dr. Fate and Zatanna, they, uh, they, they use their like special magic spell to jump into the mindscape and bind her. That's what they're trying to do. Okay. Uh, that also is then joined by Lobo and Hawkgirl and Captain Marvel and like Ice and they're just focusing on her. And <laughs> everyone, put your hands out and and, and, just, and just yell about how they're binding her or about the battle raging sending within her. Wood vibes. I'm sorry. What is Lobo doing <laughs> That's there? What he's doing. He's like thoughts and prayers. <laughs> and then for no reason whatsoever. Hey, Pariah. Pariah appears Why as a vision and goes, Destiny is not yours to command, Hecate. We're all at the will of the fates. And you're like, what does that mean? And why are you just doing the thing you did in like your most iconic image? This is all I know how to do. Yes. I mean, he does suck. So I'm not going to blame anyone for that right. one. So while that's just the power of Pariah. That's true. And his suckage. <laughs> Uh, which is rivaling Hecate's at this point. <laughs> so Captain Marvel pulls Wonder Woman out of the hole, uh, but it doesn't really help. And while Hecate murders people in the mindscape, they die for real, which includes people like Ice and Orion. I'm sorry, what? While they die in the real world, oh, I'm sorry, during the mindscape, they're they like dropping like flies, like yeah. the Matrix? Yeah, like the Matrix, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is dumb. I agree. Dr. Fate announces that they have to bind Hecate's power, and Hecate's like, but if you do that, you'll die! And then they do. So, Madame Xanadu, Dr. Fate, Phantom Stranger, who shouldn't be able to die, but does, and Captain Marvel and stuff, they die. And uh, because they die and bind her there, her <laughs> Don't power- Don't forget Batman's Batman dead. Batman also died, <laughs> uh, but he died earlier. I know, why is his hand that close then? Right? They were all in a circle. As someone who's just standing over Batman's corpse, like, nah, don't think about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so they died, and then Hecate's power is diminished. So the Amazonians that were pulled in by the Justice League arrest her. Uh, but Zatanna cleverly managed to not die during the binding spell. And so she's in yeah, the book as well. Yeah, Zatanna was like, I'm doing that shit. Yeah, okay, let's bind her, everybody. So, oh, you remember right now? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were in later. Yeah. Oops. So then they, uh, they, they literally chain Diana, possessed by Hecate, in the caves of Themyscira, and Zatanna pretty, pretty shows up. Pretty mythological for yeah. you. Oh, absolutely. And Zatanna's like, I'm really sorry, Diana. And Hecate's like, you're still talking to me like I'm Diana, like Diana can hear you. Well, she can't. It's just all me, baby. And one day I'm going to get out and I'm going to kill you. And uh, Zatanna gives a speech about hope. And she's like, hope sucks. <laughs> and, and then... Uh, <laughs> Just like I do. Yep, and then Zatanna leaves. Give and, me your face! Right? Yeah, but she doesn't. And so she's she's bound in the caves of Themyscira. And uh, while that goes on, you know, unfortunately, like, th they use the, uh, the, the Amazonians' treachery guided by Phobos as a opportunity to further subjugate women across America and the world. And so like they start arresting all the Amazonians, but then like all the women have to start like wearing more modest clothing or robes that cover up their their femininity. And so women become second class citizens and Pariah is still doing the same thing he was doing two pages ago. And then they declare war on the superheroes and so like superheroes are dying and, and then the book is over. And I know what it was, I know what happened here. They were like, they made a list when they were coming up with the Tales from the Dark Multiverse. Yeah. They made a list of all the, of every superhero's biggest event. And War of the Gods was up against Wonder Woman's name. Maybe it was between that and Witching Hour, but Witching Hour was too soon. Well, I think because James Tynion IV and Scott Snyder and, and, and company kind of like shepherded the Tales from the Dark Multiverse brand, that they definitely were like, yeah, no Witching Hour, because you know, James Tynion IV invented Witching Hour. And so like, that's gonna be the thing. And they went, no. Like I bet Top Brass went, make it War of the Gods. More people know what that is. And it's like, A, no they don't. But B, not even the people who wrote the story know what it is. <laughs> exactly. 
So, I, I mean, I, I get the branding, but it just... That's not what this is. That's not what this is. I and, mean, there's... there's. And, I feel for this creative team. Oh, yeah. Because I, I, this feels like an assignment. The, the deck is stacked against the whole damn yeah. thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's not... Right? Like... Ariel Olivetti is a good artist who does a great job most of the time, and I think they were under the gun. I think they had to get it out fast. I don't know that for a fact, but it feels like it. Yeah. Uh, and I think they were trying to just strike while the iron's hot, you know? Dark Multiverse is happening, or, as just, you know, we're, 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 we're heading into death metal at this point, so we gotta, we gotta start reminding people about, like, the Dark Multiverse and, and capitalize on this new imprint that we're gonna immediately throw oh, away. of course, yeah, Because yeah. we're DC Comics. We gotta throw away those imprints. In my opinion, a much better version of this story would have been... Diana burying Hecate in her subconscious, yeah. and then Diana going about her normal life. Right. But then when she falls asleep, Hecate takes over. Yeah. Kind of like the well, yeah, like costume. Suit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, and starts screwing things up, and like Diana's like, I don't understand. I'm just tired all the time. Mm -hmm. I, and like things are going wrong. I thought I was doing good in the world, but yeah. the, all these things are screwing up. I thought I had plans. Yeah. And I feel like they might have capitalized on that idea if there was enough pages, but like. Wonder Woman just is like, oh, it's Phobos. Yeah, like it's, there's no time. See, I would have no time to show you like alternate, you know. I think because days. I again, I was I was under the impression that it was like there's like a thing that happens that changes the course of yeah, history. Yeah, yeah. I would have just gone with the she won, right? And like deal with the like realization of a character realizing like that they're that the reality is being unmade. Exactly. Or yeah. like yeah, like Diana could be in this the whole time and then like she doesn't realize that she's lost. Yeah. No, you could have easily had Hecate win. She rewrites reality. We play with that reality for a minute. But you can't because they like. Well, no, because like you you play with the idea of like she's in charge, but of course that also is the linchpin that causes reality to get unmade, right? Mm -hmm. But like for a minute, we get to see Hecate's reality because it's a comic book. We're gonna spend two panels where she's like, "Oh, this is it," and it's like a horrible nightmare wasteland. Yeah, that's also Grecian themed, and. Diana's with her, right? Like maybe she kills her, but like some part of her imprints onto Hecate or yeah. copies. And so it's in there. And so Hecate is like, oh, what folly I have wrought. You know what I mean? Like, oh, only now at the end do I understand. And Diana's like, I forgive you. You know what I mean? And it's just, and it gets unmade. And Tense Fugonaut's like, sometimes these worlds only last a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, but Diana's like, I don't forgive you. It could have been like that. Maybe she's that mad. You know, but like, that's the idea. Yeah. But, you know, then we don't get Batman in it. Why not? He was but there. even then, Batman's only in it for like two panels, and he dies. Weren't they on the island anyway to help to hang out? Yeah, I mean they were physically there, but they would lose. You know, but then you get to see some fun fight scenes where Hecate murders all of them, or or or, or reality unmakes them, and they're like, ah. either way, you get to see a fun image of like the Justice League going no, or they're just <laughs> made into particles or something. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's you know. The Tales of the Dark Multiverse brand, it started strong. Like, I know in order to, to kick things off, they launched it with Nightfall, and it was like, yes. Just just from a branding standpoint, I'm like, good idea and interesting execution. Uh, that was co-written, I think, by Kyle Higgins and Scott Snyder. It's like, what a neat idea. And, like, good art. And just, like, a really cool idea. And I'm not just saying that because it's Batman, but, like, it's a good idea it was Batman. Uh, but, you know, you, you, but then you do these other things, like, like Blackest Night, which was just a secret Lobo book, and, like, all these other stories that are just kind of like, oh. And then, like, you could tell that DC's belief in the brand just starts to wane. Yeah, they're like, uh, what else were we doing for this? <laughs> yeah. I, I know we had plans, but, but I'm also kind of interested in making these other books. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just keep it going for a little bit. You know what it reminds me of? People. Reminds me of the, the Pixar napkin. You know? I had these ideas. And we did them. And we got a lot of, we got, we got a lot of credit for it. But now we're a studio. And we have to keep making more of them. And it's like, oh. I, turns out I just don't have as many ideas. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so uh, if you want this, you can get it alongside a number of other tales from the Dark Multiverse in Volume 2, which has both a soft cover and hard cover. Uh, available in the comments down below. So check it out. Or you can get this. Or you can just go get one or one more of the gods. Uh, check out that episode, by the way. It's a really fun episode. A little bit of like a tie-in to yeah. our own show. Yeah. And check out War of the Gods. If you're like, what what was that? What 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 is War of the Gods? Definitely check that episode out. But pick up a copy of War of the Gods and give yeah. it a, give it a look. There's, there's a, some crazy shit. There's some crazy crap in there. <laughs> it's true. But uh, well thanks a lot for watching everybody. We'll see you guys next time with another episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Keep reading. And, and there you have it. When, when are we getting to get the rest of these? Uh, we like did. Hush. Oh yeah, I was, we've almost done Hush a number of times. I've thought about doing Hush and I'm like, I don't want to waste a Batman episode on that. But 
You know what? Maybe we will. The, the one that's like insane. We did. Uh, we did this yeah. one. I think we did that one. I thought we did Flashpoint. Flashpoint we did. Yeah. And we did this one. So we got two more to left. We got two more left. I think we only have two more tales from the Dark Multiverse left. Wow. What? I know. And How could that be? Make more. Yeah. That's probably for the best. Yeah. 